How to cash flow $430 a month in a crashing market. Arnie on the team wanted to share kind of his experience with you on his latest project on kind of renovating a duplex, uh, what we had plan A, what he had plan B. And you kind of had the courage to come on to the channel and talk about the kind of negatives of real estate investing because if you get caught off guard with a really fast going down market, you need to be prepared for it. And he did have a plan B and he wanted to kind of share with you kind of his honest experience of what happened and how you can mitigate risk. So if you kind of want to learn more about this, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. And if you kind of want to chat with Arnie or myself regarding some of the projects like this and try to execute it so that, you know, plan A is successful, then you can book a call with me using the link on the screen. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and a time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and the question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Crime Properties TV. So glad you could join me today. My name is Zen and I run a Remax in the greater Toronto area on top of making awesome real estate content like this for you. And on today's episode, we got Arnie on the team to kind of share with you some of the projects that he's been working on this year. Uh, we want to kind of give you a boots on the ground idea of what we do with our investors. Uh, this is his project and why we always want to have a plan B because, you know, poo poo hits the fan and the market was really good when we were doing this and then it became really bad, right? So Arnie, you want to say hi? Yeah, absolutely. So happy to be here. Always a good time recording these videos. Uh, this one has been in the works for about uh, six weeks now. Um, we're kind of at the tail end of it. It's been rented out. Uh, but we just wanted to give you an idea as to how to sort of how these projects come to fruition from start to finish. Yeah, for sure. Take it away, man. Show us what you got. All right. So on your screen now, you should be seeing a video here. Um, I'm pretty sure you actually took this then. Yeah, I, um, I remember this. So, <laughs> Immediately walking in, you have the washer dryer, very odd placement. This is where the uh, coat closet would have been. Uh, as you can see, the home is in some pretty rough shape. There's a random door there. The tenants for this home actually uh, were evicted. So they actually trashed the place prior to leaving. Yep, I remember that one it was pretty bad. Do you want to tell people where this property is? Yeah, so this is on the east end. This is in Oshawa, yeah. just to give you an idea. Uh, so even in this market right now, rents are doing really good. Obviously, like with the interest rate increases, the prices have come down quite a bit since we were able to buy this. Yeah. But as you can see, yeah. Up. yeah, I remember yes, those yeah. Prints. Yep, that was poop. <laughs> yeah, there was. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Yep. yep. I remember this. Yep. So when, uh, this home here, the bedrooms are a bit on the smaller side, there's definitely enough room for a double vanity in the washroom. Yeah. And, uh, we're just going to let this play out just so you can see. Yeah. No, like that that the doesn't date when we looked at this, there's snow. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I remember I was in pretty rough shape. So this was uh, the first half of the uh, house and there's another half and it's a legal duplex. Yeah, so these next series of videos are just gonna be a quick little time lapse. Um, I took it upon myself to kind of be a bit more involved in this project uh, to number one, film some content just so that some of our clients and obviously viewers have an idea of like how we operate. And uh, I'll just slowly like pause and play the video, explain what's been going on. So here, me and uh, a good friend of mine, um, he's a contractor by trade. So if you need any contractors, if you want referrals, we have a good list uh, that we can give, uh, but we're taking down the uh, cabinetry here. This is literally day zero uh, after closing. And just to give you some context, this was uh, purchased for a million dollars at I would say one of the uh, more peak times in the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These time lapses. So that sink cool. are gone. What was that? Oh, I said the, the time lapses look cool. Yeah. So that sink that we pulled out, like, um, it was so bad to the point where like, there was actually like someone pooped in it and, uh, oh. yeah, that was not fun, but things that come with, I guess, investing in real estate, you get the good and the bad, obviously the good being the profits in this case, not so much, but I mean, again, this was a steal, I think at the time but not so much anymore with the market coming down. Right. And that's yeah. kind of being like truthful about what's happening with the market. For sure. Yeah. Oh, this is when you guys were opening the wall up, right? Yeah. So for me, like this is the most fun part, just tearing down walls, kind of seeing, just making a mess really. Um, but then again, like from a client perspective, it helps me explain things a lot better, especially uh, when we're looking at renovation projects, things like that. And also just breaks up the day like, instead of just trading full time, <laughs> which is normally what I'm doing. So, yeah. Yeah, so you ripped up all the base part of what's looked like, and then that's the door that's opening up, right? Or exactly. Yeah. That's being opened up. Um, if I remember, oh, actually, we'll go back. Yeah, door. 
Hmm? Yeah, no, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Okay, and then what's happening here? Uh, another good friend of mine, he's just taking care of the uh, popcorn ceiling. I'm just going to quickly pause this. So that wall that will eventually be taken down inside the home, uh, this is me just checking to make sure that's not load bearing. We knew this beforehand, but I just figured I'd kind of throw this in as a video. This content was filled actually from my Instagram that's not active right now, uh, but again, just kind of showing friends and family uh, <laughs> the project that we've been up to. And this, like for me, was the most fun part, taking down this wall here. So again, not load bearing. We saw that in the... Uh, that previous slide there, that little snippet. Yeah. Yeah. There's no beam there. So probably not load bearing. Yeah. Same idea here. Yeah. Just kind of get a sense of like what walls look like when you open up. It did. Oh, it did. <laughs> it did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep it going here. So, uh, this is when I took delivery of some vinyl flooring. Yep. Uh, when we're looking at investment properties, it's worthwhile to go vinyl just because it's a bit more water resistant. Yep. Nowadays, laminate's also like equally as uh, as like water resistant, right? Yeah, it's like quality wise, they're on par. Yeah, um, but I here's feel like good... vinyl more the scratch wear is good for like pets. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's some um, definitely vanity. don't go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's a double vanity. Yeah, exactly. So I think if there was anything that we went over budget on, it was definitely this. Um, it's nice. The, but, but the black hardware, that's our uh, signature. A lot of yeah. people are copying us now. <laughs> exactly. So this uh, next couple of snippets right here is just us opening up. In the initial video where you saw the washer dryer, I thought it was really awkward. Uh, so we just flipped it. We opened up the back, and then we're just going to put a door here now instead. Yeah. I think so we were thinking of doing a cubby where the original um, washer dryer was, but we just opted not yeah, to... Okay in an effort to save time, if you will. Yeah, I, if I recall, the washer dryer was moved to the back of the hallway, right? Yeah, exactly. So it flips. So you can kind of catch um, a glimpse of how we closed off that section there. Yeah. So I think this is a video that you took too when you were in Oshawa. Yeah, I think so. When I was, I was checking on some properties, I went to go check mm -hmm. out. Yeah, yeah. So you can see the floor in there, washer dryer is out. Uh, the back of it has been framed out to put the washer and dryer in that little cubby. Yeah. And then obviously the kitchen's been taken out. That bulkhead that you see in there as well is going to be removed. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I actually do appreciate you going slower through this so we can kind of take time to. I'm, I'm, show I'm pretty you. sure I pressed the wrong button when I was shooting the video for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I just pressed the wrong button. This is like super slow mo. <laughs> okay. Oh, no worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, all the popcorn ceiling's gone. Polly's has got put in. The uh, water supply and the electrical were adjusted so we can fit the washer dryer on the other side. Yeah. Well, while we're doing this, what was the total cost of the renos? Because I'm sure people are wondering. Uh, total all in, believe, with newer appliances too, was about 44,000. 44, yeah. And we had initially budgeted for 40. And at the start of it, I was actually under budget, but then actually delays happen and things like that. So. Oh, yeah. The pandemic delays were ridiculous. Or like, mm -hmm. and then when you were trying to buy stuff, the pricing. Yeah. So in an effort to kind of save time in order to refinance faster, there were moments where I actually like spent more than I should have or could have um, just to get it done Yeah, and kind of go over like yeah. the implications to that towards the end. But yeah. the final floor is starting to get put in Yeah. in this video here. And we're just going to skip to the next one. Yeah. So I think if I remember correctly, uh, we're just doing work on the upstairs. The downstairs was already kind of good to go, except for like some minor touch-ups, right? Yeah. So for the downstairs, it was mostly just uh, a backsplash. Again, just a little longevity of the investment property and then um, pallets as well. So just to brighten up the space. Okay. See so the pallets so next... installed here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and here we made quite a bit of progress. So cabinetry came in again, not custom. This is all from like Lowe's same kind of feel if you go to Ikea, but there's no back order. There's no weight. And again, just an effort to save time. Yeah. If you notice there's primer that's been put in now. Yeah, yeah. The final flooring is done in the living room. Yeah, already it's coming along. The yeah. uh, door hardware has been swapped out. Yeah, all the casings are in. Yep. Our plastic you see the baseboard on the ground. Yep. That's day 10? Oh, you guys are fast. Oh, we're fast, yeah. yeah. So a lot of this got slowed down from more of just like a, um, I would say like a material delay. Yeah, yeah. It's like one supplier promises that we can get it on this day and then we're just kind of waiting two, three days, nothing happens. Yeah. Um, but overall, had we had everything, uh, I think it could have been done easily in two weeks. Like there were multiple subs or subcontractors rather. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
This is another video that you took actually. So all the primer has been done. I believe this is actually painted. Cabinets in, oh. countertops in. Yeah. All the door casings uh, have hardware now, and baseboards are also in at this point as well. Oh, the washer and dryer is back there. Okay, so it's not at the yeah. back of the hallway. I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh no no sorry yeah we just flipped it because I see it makes more sense. Yeah. We have a closet. Yeah I gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then for the bathroom, the ugly mirror gets taken down, and then yeah more paints. I don't remember taking this video. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure this was you. I oh, lost I, I recognize the sleeve on my sweater. I'm pretty sure it's me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and also my videos are in landscape. Yours are in portrait. <laughs> I know. That's uh, It's because I just try and post them on social media. So. Yeah, true. And all right, here it is. So this is the final product now. I see. Oh, that's pretty fast. Yeah, so like almost works. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but it's so kind of yeah. yep. summarize. That will go ahead. Oh, so yeah, classic black hardware. Yeah. Love it. Looks great. Opened up. Yeah, the bulkhead is gone. Nice mirror. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they didn't go with the uh, Costco Artica light, you know, with the defogger. Oh, yeah. Again, it was more just like whatever was in inventory. Oh, I see. Or whatever suppliers had in inventory, we decided to go with that. So, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. Yeah. For how quick yeah, you turn that's about around. Yeah. And I think the idea here was like, uh, it was a quick turnaround while the market was still good. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you'll cover it later, but like it would, the quick turnaround allows us to refi faster. But I think we got snagged. You got snagged up with a couple of things, right? Yeah, definitely. So again, like a lot of these things that were done where we went over budget were done in an effort where we saw the interest rates were going to be increasing, kind of saw signs that maybe the market was going to soften. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of like, okay, let's spend the extra money up front now in hopes that we can still refinance a solid amount yeah. uh, in the short term. Um, but we'll get into how that all played out yeah. uh, shortly. Yeah. I think and that's about it. Yeah. This is the previous. Video. Yeah. So I think we're good on the videos, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so to give you an idea as to what the numbers look like and what the intended plan was, I'm just going to yes. open up another screen. Intended plan. <laughs> intended, it's yes. It always goes differently. <laughs> Emphasis on the intended. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. Like, I think my refi took like another six months from what I thought. <laughs> All right, so now all that fun stuff is done. Um, to kind of summarize, all we did was really put in pot lights, put vinyl flooring in, again, just for durability, longevity of the actual investment property, swapped out the cabinetry because it was really dated, opened up that one um, wall, so it's more open concept. And then we also went ahead and changed the countertops. Yeah. Aside from that, it was mostly just paints and, oh, sorry, the, the vanity in the bathroom as well. But yeah. kind of minimal aesthetic renovation that turned out really well if you ask me you also tore down the wall that's a little bit on the bigger side right oh yeah sorry okay i said that but did you oh, okay yeah all right <laughs> i was listening uh, <laughs> to get into how the numbers work so this was purchased at a million there was a property that sold across the street for 1.25 at the time yeah. Um, yeah a little bit of a larger lot so the intention was to purchase this obviously put in let's say forty thousand dollars worth of rentals so we're at a million forty now um, refinance out all the renovation money as well as a little bit extra to potentially jumpstart the next project yep. and then have the monthly rents carry the new mortgage at call it like 1.2 or 1.1, depending on what that refinance amount came back at. Yeah. So if that was tough to follow, we have this investment calculator in front just so it's easier. Um, but if you're seeing my screen right now, the highlighted box purchase price was a million or 999 thousand annual property tax right here uh we went 20 percent down and at the time interest rates for variable were only 2.7 percent which is amazing i think that was um, around the first rate hike right so yeah still around that yeah yeah so that was when people were debating between like fixed and variable people were still choosing variable now it's kind of up in the air we'll see what happens with well you uh, have to go variable on this one because you had you're going to refi right yeah, exactly. But just like from a time frame perspective, that's like where people were in the market. Still hesitant about yeah. which to choose. Um, so the lower unit we rented out for eighteen fifty. It's a two bedroom, uh, one washroom with two parking spaces. Again, this is a legal duplex, and then the upstairs able to rent for twenty four hundred. So all in, it's forty two hundred and fifty each month. Yeah. 
uh, property taxes are factored in as a monthly cost and then property insurance it used to be a lot lower but nowadays i guess it's 220 dollars a month so that ate into it a bit well that's because you have it in a corporation that's why so yeah you're not in a corporation i think the last quote came in at like 600 in personal so it's like much less yeah yeah but that, um, that, that, that's a topic for a different video <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> So in short, all in all, uh, this one was at a cash flow positive of about four hundred sixty-three dollars, yeah. and um, that's I guess like step one. So with all the renovations in, we were about a million and forty, call it a million forty-two. Yeah. Uh, the unfortunate news was by the end of let's say, uh, or no, yeah, no, mid-April. Yeah. We had our first appraisal done, um, and the number actually came back at eight hundred ninety-two. So if you remember at the very, very beginning of this video, we said we purchased this for a million. Yeah. So it came in lower after the renovation value. Yeah. We're actually able to get a second appraisal done, which was a lot healthier in my opinion, uh, but it still wasn't enough where it was worthwhile refinancing at a new interest rate and kind of going through that process. Yeah. So all in all, like the takeaway from this is all the money that we had initially invested into the renovation is now trapped. Um, but the kind of caveat or the safeguard is because the monthly cash flow is so healthy here, we're just essentially just waiting for time to pass where number one, equity is being put towards the property. And then obviously um, it still pays us amongst the amount yeah. each, uh, each it, month. It just allows you to hold the property while you're kind of like in a downturn market right now, right? Yeah. yeah. So here's like a textbook example of like, if everything could go wrong, what would it look like? And this is the case, but because again, it's more of a investment strategy. So we knew that going into that, into this project, like at its current price point, the rents were going to carry it. Um, we wouldn't be in a position where we had to sell it necessarily. Yeah. So more inf unfortunate because of where we are in the market. But again, yeah. um, it's just part of the game, if you will. So the upside would be on the refi at 1.1. I forgot what the math would be, but like you would basically only be about a hundred grand in the property after, right? Cause you pull up like $140,000 on the refi. Yeah. So you basically uh, spent on a good market. If it like stayed that way, you would have spent like what, four week, five weeks did the work, bought basically a million dollar property for a hundred grand that pays you, I don't know, a few, a few hundred bucks a month in cash flow, And then you move it to the mm -hmm. next one. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but then the downside risk was the market turned, the appraisal didn't work, right? And then it just didn't make sense. Yeah. All right, so to quickly summarize this project, on the left side, you see what the market was and obviously the peak of it. If we use these same numbers with the interest rates at where they are right now, obviously it becomes a lot less attractive. Um, I would say if you're looking into projects like this, obviously looking for distressed sellers or homes that are well under market value, even in the current market, because we're looking at a market crash is something that you should consider. Um, I would say the big takeaway from this though is I've done a lot of projects in the past where it's like super, super successful. Obviously this is just part of what comes with it. And again, it's not necessarily hurting me or my portfolio financially, just because we go into it with this strategy and there's a lot less speculation as to, um, let's say how much the market's going to pick back up in such a short period of time. Uh, realistically, this was maybe all in the span of four to six weeks where the appraisal could have been a lot higher than where it was. And the unfortunate reality is like, sometimes it just doesn't play in your favor. So, um, it's worth talking to our team. Uh, if you're going to start looking into building a portfolio and so that's pretty much it. This is really just to show you guys the kind of ins and outs of when projects turn out really great. And then obviously sometimes not so great, but you have a very transparent view on what our team does on a daily basis. Yeah, and I appreciate you coming and suggesting doing this, even, you know, showcasing what you're doing, even if it is a failure, because, you know, there are upsides and downsides and, you know, everybody only talks about the good, no one talks about the bad. So it's, you know, brave of you to come and talk about the bad to kind of just educate our clients on why sometimes we're spinicky about cash flow, because if, you know, this happens, at least you don't have to liquidate right now, right? Exactly. And so a large reason um, as to why this didn't fail is because from day one, we had a strategy going into it and this we've kind of played out worst case scenarios. Obviously the worst case did happen and we're in a position where we knew from the very beginning, if this were to ever happen, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You can hold it for the long term and ride it out. Right. Exactly. You're not like bleeding like hundreds of thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars a month on this property. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah Ultimately, it's still 430 or what is it? $463 a month in cash flow in a market crash. Yeah. Obviously, 
it's not like the most ideal situation, but it could be significantly worse. <laughs> it could be significantly worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Arnie. Well, uh, thanks for sharing that. If anyone wants to reach out to Arnie and team, um, I'll put his contacts somewhere on the screen. Uh, if you're looking to kind of chat with me and about kind of planning about where to go about this, or if you want to do something like Arnie, you could also uh, book a call with me using the link on the screen. It's www.chatwithzen.com. And until next time, Arnie, let's sign off. See ya. Sounds good. Cheers. Bye. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, this one's really good. You know what? Just watch them both.